Jim, thank you for the introduction and your service, and to you and Jay and Jeff and uh, everybody, everybody, the elected officials, the folks with titles, the folks who are just <laughs> VIPs without the titles. Thank you for what you did. Uh, I am, uh, you know, I was thinking about the elevator speech, as you said, and the way we delivered it to Ann. Um, I have a problem, you know, I, I'm not very good at sound bites. I'm an English major, so I feel very strong. You should finish a whole sentence. <laughs> Try to speak in paragraphs. Don't oversimplify. Um, and as a result, it's a perfect example that when we were on the elevator with Ann that night, we in fact stopped the elevator on an unoccupied floor and got off because I couldn't finish my pitch <laughs> to get from the top to the uh, to the bottom. But uh, I will be brief tonight because really. Thank you may be the most perfect two words in the English language. They're so complete, especially when uttered with sincerity. And I sincerely uh, am grateful to all of you, every single one of you. I haven't been at this so long, and I've talked to John about this a bunch of times. I haven't been in this business so long that it doesn't still just humble me beyond measure that people set aside what they're doing and take up your cause. And that, uh, that asking people, to come and be a part of something larger than themselves um, is, a, is something that actually generates a response. And so many of you, all of you here, but so many others around the Commonwealth, over 20,000 on Election Day, um, set aside what they were doing, took time off, and made phone calls, and made visits, knocked on doors, gave folks rides, and babysat, and whatever it took whatever it took to invite people to see a stake in their own civic and political future. And uh, it's not a very gubernatorial way to describe it, but it blows my mind. <laughs> I'm grateful for that. The pundits um, have uh, spent the last uh, month now scratching their heads, <laughs> interpreting this race. And it's, it's kind of fun. I mean, I'm, I don't spend all that much time uh, reading or listening to or watching the pundits, but I kind of enjoy it when I hear about, uh, oh my goodness, you know, it was, uh, it was Lazarus. It was not meant to be. See, only the folks who know their biblical studies even know what you're talking about. <laughs> you talk about Lazarus, but uh, that uh, it was not meant to be somehow or other. Uh, you know, this, uh, this we, what, what was it, John? They, we stopped the tide, the red tide, <laughs> at Massachusetts. All of them. How, did the, how did it happen? There are two explanations, two lessons that, for me, are takeaways. And I just want to state them here because I think they're important for all of us to remember. The first is never, ever, ever underestimate the power of the grassroots. Never. The whole... The whole business of making it personal, of engaging, of having that conversation neighbor to neighbor, colleague to colleague, friend to friend, family member to family member, and the respect that is demonstrated by coming and inviting someone in a personal way to be a part of this cause and this campaign frankly, any campaign. It's a thing that must not be forgotten. We are fortunate in this Commonwealth that as the leader of our party, we have someone who understands the tactical and philosophical power of that idea in John Walsh, and I could not be more grateful. But it turns out a grassroots person-to-person -person appeal will beat a well-financed lie every time. Don't forget. Don't forget. The second lesson I ask you just to remember is something I have believed in as a citizen for a long, long time. But sometimes I feel that uh, folks who are ambitious politically feel is too risky an idea. And it's something I'm particularly worried about among Democrats. We win when we stand for something. Amen. When we grow a backbone 
and stand up for what we believe in. That is when we win. Not when we try to blur the differences between ourselves and a harder and harder right-wing Republican Party. Not when we try to outthink the electorate and say, well, if we just kind of say one thing in Quincy and something else in Milton and something else in Western Massachusetts, then it'll all be fine. Right now, right now, all over the Commonwealth and all over the country, there are people asking themselves whether the American dream itself is up for grabs. That's the anxiety people are worried about in this economy. Whether you have work or you don't, people who have work are worried that tomorrow they're going to get the visit or the phone call and told, I'm sorry, we can't keep you anymore. You in this room and those you know are asking yourselves whether it's still possible in this country to make a better way for yourselves and your kids. Something that we never ever doubted before in America. And the difference between Democrats and Republicans is not reduced to left and right. It's not reduced to liberal and conservative. The words don't even mean anything anymore. The question is, are we going to say to everybody, you're on your own and good luck? Or are we, as Democrats, going to stand up for the idea that we have a stake in each other's dreams and struggles, as well as our own? And when we stand up for that, we win. We are proud of the campaigns we run. We understand it doesn't let any of us off the hook in terms of the really hard choices that still must be made. But I think it makes a difference to all of us, those who voted for us and those who didn't, if we are able to convey a real difference, and that difference being that we as Democrats understand that we are part of a Commonwealth-wide community. And that means each of us has to see the stake that we have, not just in our own dreams and our own struggles, but in our neighbors as well. Now, I make those two points both as a form of thank you, but also as a challenge to you. I'm glad the campaign is over. <laughs> I know you are too. <laughs> and I am glad. Uh, that it turned out the way it did. <laughs> but the fact is that the cause is not over. The work is just beginning, or resuming. And there will be other campaigns, and other issues, and other candidates, where those same two lessons must be remembered the power of the grassroots, and the power of conviction politics. Believe in that. Stay engaged with those values and those commitments in mind. And we will win next time, and the time after that, and in your campaigns, and in other campaigns, and we will repair this Commonwealth and this country. God bless you all. Thank you.